So this story is about a recent article stating that the Tesla Model 3 costs more to charge than a gasoline car. Um, I'm going to go through this and I'll help. I'll let you make your own conclusions. Um, but this was uh, from Anton Wallman. Um, and I'll just go through some quotes here and then I'll dig into my analysis. Uh, first off, he states um, basically that uh, th th there's kind of two pieces to this. One is he cherry picks a lot of data to try to make his case, um, and then he makes some assumptions which are just not true. Um, and and we'll, we'll see what the data shows here in a second. So the first quote from this article I, I wanted to um, to talk about was he said, uh, how does that compare to gasoline cars? At 50 miles per gallon and today's nationwide average of gasoline price of $2.65, that's five cents per mile. In other words, it's cheaper to drive a gasoline car than a Tesla Model 3. So what he's doing there, he's taking the some of the most expensive states where for supercharging, assuming that you as, as a Tesla owner will or a Model 3 owner will charge 100% at superchargers then you know taking that cherry picked expensive rate compared to a national average which is not apples to apples and and he and he gets a, a one penny difference per mile um and, and as you see when we dig into the detail i don't know why but uh yeah he wasn't able to really do the math and figure it out but we we were able to do that so um next co next quote from this that i thought was funny was um he talks about uh, an EV battery and he says, it is understood that you should not have to pay for a new EV battery within the first 10 years, if for no other reason because of the warranty and general expectations of reliability. However, at some point, the day to day, I'm sorry, the day to buy a new battery will come. Perhaps not at the, this is the funny part, perhaps not at the, the 10 year mark, but otherwise at the 15, 20 or 25 year mark or at 25 years. <laughs> Uh, who of you watching, commenting, whatever, have a car 25 years old? The data I've analyzed, and you can see those videos on them where we have literally hundreds of thousands of data points uh, point to 25 years or more, which is why I consider that to be forever because most people aren't going to keep their cars that long. If you think about 25 years ago, uh, the internet didn't exist. Google, Facebook, cell phones barely existed. It's just not something that happens here in the United States. So while uh, technically that may be true, uh, that at some point you will need to replace the battery, uh, it is it is impractical to think that that's, that's something to consider right now and, and that that would affect any calculations about the cost of charging your vehicle right now or maybe, maybe in 25 years it would matter. Um, then he goes on to talk about that further. And he says, so at $250 per kilowatt, he's talking about the price of the battery, we're talking a $20,000 as a total price for an 80 kilowatt hour battery, which is not what it has, um, perhaps including installation and disposal if necessary. So this assumes a couple things. Uh, first, he incorrectly states the size of the battery. It's a 75 kilowatt hour battery, not 80. Uh, $250 is grossly overestimating the current price of the lithium ion batteries for uh, for Teslas. Um, also that in 25 years, the price will have stayed the exact same, which isn't how consumer electronics work. Forbes actually did an article on this and quoting from them, and I'll put a link in there, the price per kilowatt hour of lithium ion batteries has declined from an average of, of, of around $400 in two, uh, 2012 when the Model S was launched to levels of under $150 currently. For instance, GM says that it pays about $145 per kilowatt hour for batteries it sourced from LG Chem for the Chevy Bolt. So already grossly overestimating and basically falsifying information to try to make a case that in 25 years, you will have to pay this fee and that at that point, you will really have lost out, which is just it made me it made me laugh and then he had a quote here um that that i i just oh it's so nice uh saying the math is simply devastating well anton unfortunately the math is devastating um and you know for you just just to help you here i i actually did the math on this um and so, so let's go go take a look at that uh first um i'll show you where i got the data uh so the first bit of data I got was from fueleconomy.gov, and I'm looking at here the hybrid electric cars. Um, these are cars that actually take gas. So what he does in his studies, he picks the three best cars, averages them, and assume every, assumes every car is that. 
as we know, that's really not how the world works, um, and that's not how data works either. So uh, what I did is I, I looked at uh, looked at um, this page here from fueleconomy.gov and averaged out or actually just you know downloaded all of the miles per gallon of all these hybrid electric vehicles. The next bit of data I got to do the math was the price of electricity uh, per kilowatt, cents per kilowatt by state in the United States. Because see, in his analysis, he assumes that you'll charge 100% at the supercharger, which is not really possible because first off, it's more far more expensive than charging at home. And also, um, the data I've analyzed shows that 91% of the time, Tesla owners are charging at home, not at superchargers. Yes, it'll be a bit different with Model 3, but to assume that 100% of them charge there is lying or you know, making a gross uh, assumption that is not based in reality. So I don't know if you wanna call that a lie, a falsehood, whatever term you wanna use. The next one is the price of gas. Now he used a national average, but of course, we don't pay national averages, you pay whatever it is in your state. So I downloaded the data from GasBuddy for every state. So I put all the links in there and I pulled this together into a Google Sheet. So in the Google Sheet, I have all the data here. So I have here the average price of gas um, for every state. I have the, uh, the, I'm sorry, this is the fuel economy here for every different car. And this was actually, took a little while to parse. Um, the electricity cost, the average retail, and this comes directly from that website as you can see there and these supercharger costs. Now, supercharger costs are have multiple tiers in a, a lot of states, and so in those cases, I average them. Uh, there, there's kind of complex about what uh, you'll actually pay depending on the where you're at with your battery, how fast the charge you're getting, et cetera. It's really um, impossible to calculate in, in a general sense, so the best way to do it is to average those two, um, so that's what I do there. And then in other states like California, it's just a flat rate, so it's the same. Um, so the, those, that's all my source data. Um, and what I did is I actually pulled that together into some analysis here. So uh, let me switch over and we can kind of run through that now. Here we go. Okay, so uh, this is a story that it's called a, uh, a story in Tableau, which is the software I'm using. And I put this together. This will be online on, on teslanomics.co shortly. Um, it starts out with the story here, the kind of background. So um, I looked up Anton's um, background, and he currently lists himself as an unemployed gambler. Um, so he published that report, as I mentioned. Um, and in this story here, we did the uh, devastating math, as he calls it. So the article is is here for folks you know that haven't done it, and here's his LinkedIn. Um, I matched up his Seeking Alpha profile, uh, which lists um, this uh, managing director, Think Equity Partners, um, as well. You know, it matches even though you don't see his photo here. Um, when I searched for that name, this came up, and, and all the job experience seemed to match. So I believe this is his profile. So I'm not making up when I call him an unemployed gambler. Okay. So the first thing to do was to look at the monthly gas cost by state. So I took all that data, as I mentioned, and I parsed it, and here you go. So we're driving 1,300 miles per month, and we get uh, 45 miles per gallon is what I'm putting. He put 54. Uh, it's kind of crazy. The actual average of all those vehicles, the hybrid electric vehicles, is 32. Um, so if we wanted to do true you know, apples to apples, this miles per gallon here should be 32. Um, and I'll, again, when I put this online, you can actually play with these numbers yourself. So you can kind of, you know, check my math or check my work. Um, you can even download the entire thing and, and do all that if you guys, you know, uh, want to dig in deeper. So um, if we assume uh, that that's 32, here are, is the cost by state. So this is how many gallons of gas you'll need to drive 1,300 miles based on this miles per gallon. Here's the cost of gas, the average in that state. And so multiplying those two numbers gives you the monthly gas cost. So you can see like in California, we're at $142, et cetera. And this kind of goes all the way down. Um, but, you know, because we want to be nice, I'm a nice guy, let's give him the benefit of the doubt and call it 45, closer to uh, what he's stating, but you know he's completely cherry picking the, the, those results there. So then well, let's do that same math for Tesla's or for the Model 3 specifically. Uh, so here you have every state broken down again. You have uh, the kilowatts, kilowatt hours necessary per month. So 1300 miles and the watt hours per mile of 260, which is what I've got in my real world test and was kind of what is advertised out there. And a 15% usage of the supercharger. Remember that 
91% of the time people are charging at home based on the current analysis and data we have of thousands of Tesla owners. Now, um, assuming Model 3 owners are a little bit more than that, I bumped it up 5%. We can play with these numbers, um, and you can see kind of as I do that here, it kind of shifts the cost and goes between them. Uh, but but there's really very, very little chance that anyone will be charging 100%. And in fact, if you do, it could damage your battery and, and things will change and all that. So it's really not, not feasible for somebody to do that. So it's unrealistic is, is kind of what I'm saying. Um, so there's your electricity cost, the cents per kilowatt hour, the supercharger cost in that same state, the cents per kilowatt hour. And again, that's an average if it's somewhere that has a tiered pricing. Um, and then you just add, uh, you know, multiply those out. So this is how much in electricity you'll be paying and um, the, the total uh, monthly cost for your Tesla there. So then you have your uh, gas cost versus your Tesla cost. So you can see that you have Alabama, um, you know, $70 and the Tesla cost would be $35. And you can see that there's the price difference there. So these kind of all just, you know, go down. And again, we can adjust the watt hours per mile, the miles per month, the percent supercharge of the miles per gallon, kind of all the parameters uh, here. Um, then if you want to see this same graph broken down in a graphical format, you can see that from low to high, the, uh, the actual comparison here, this is the percent savings is what the bar represents. Hawaii has the least electricity, super expensive. Gas is insanely expensive. So those things, you know, make it kind of the worst uh, case scenario of 14% savings. Um, and, you know, the further down you go, you have an average of 47% overall. Um, but notice there are none here, no cases here where it goes negative. Now, if you were to bump this up to, I think it was 55, 55, 60%. So if you live in Hawaii and you charge at a supercharger 60% uh, of the time um, for your Model 3, then you will be about 2%, um, you'll be losing about 2% um, compared to having a gas car with 45 miles per gallon. Uh, so, you know, if you look down though, the average is still 31% savings. Now, if you um, bump this up all the way to a hundred, uh, you're still on average across all 50 states saving 17%. Some states, yes, it is true. You would be spending more money. Um, and again, that is not reasonable. <laughs> it's not practical. And in fact, Tesla won't let you do it because at a certain point, the supercharger will damage your vehicle's battery, so they will limit how fast that charges and how much you can charge. So this isn't this isn't reality. Um, and even if you take it down to 50%, you're still in, on on average saving 35% over a gas car, a very big chunk, especially if you drive a lot. So back in the real world, where we're maybe 15%, uh, you're saving almost uh, almost 50% over a gas car. So Anton's analysis uh, was based cherry picking data based on false assumptions and using incorrect values, as well as things like assuming that in 25 years paying, you'll still have your car and have to pay for the battery and that the battery technology will have remained the constant price, which is just not true. So all in all, I don't know what he was thinking. Maybe, you know, he does as he states there, have a short position on Tesla. So perhaps um, his article succeeded in, in providing some kind of negative uh, press around it, which may have um, you know hurt the stock a little bit more, and so he could make more money. So always take that into consideration. Uh, to be clear, I do not have any positions on Tesla. Uh, I'm a fan of them. Obviously, I'm an owner, um, but I do not have any actual investment in Tesla stock. So I have nothing to gain um, by by seeing them succeed there, other than you know the chance to buy a cool car. Um, so to, just to, to wrap up the analysis here, uh, he chose these six states. Um, and to quote the, the article, because those would be the ones where most EV, EV buyers are anyways. Hmm, I wonder how he figured that up, you know, just finger to the wind kind of a thing. Um, he also uh, used the dollars per kilowatt from the Tesla superchargers in these states. However, a national average of dollars per gallon, which again is not apples to apples. But just, you know, to amuse him, um, I, I filtered th these, uh, these data down to those six states to see what they show. 
Um, again, um, you know, we're looking at a, an average of 44% savings. Uh, the average price per gallon, remember he used was 264, but the actual average of price per gallon for these six states was 286, so quite a bit more. Um, and the supercharger rate there of 23.5, uh, not 24. Uh, again, make falsifying information, making false claims, however you guys want, want, want to word it. Um, then when you compare those graphically, there you have it. You know, Massachusetts is the worst one here, saving 21%, um, you know, and then the highest one being Washington, um, upwards of 62% savings um, compared, to, uh, compared to a gas car. So uh, the findings here that in a real world scenario, as I've explained there, you'll save on average 47% of monthly fuel cost by owning a Tesla Model 3 over a high miles per gallon hybrid. I, I'll be posting this online. You guys can download the data, work with these numbers, play with them, whatever you want to do, twist and turn it, however you feel is fit. Uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think because these things bother me when people try to use data and skew it towards their financial benefit. It's human nature. That's what a, a lot of people do. I completely understand why they do it, um, but that is also why I feel the need to respond to these things um, with the data I've done here, um, with, with, with the analysis. So let me know what you guys think, um, and we will continue on our journey here.